The other day, we took a plain JavaFX application and introduced TornadoFX to it. And we implemented a wizard using plain Java code. So we didn't utilize Kotlin. But at the end of that demo, I started converting one of the wizard pages into Kotlin. But I kind of left everything in, in, in a weird place. So I would like to pick up on that and uh, show you how to actually start implementing uh, Kotlin classes and, and TornadoFX views in an existing uh, plain Java application. So uh, this is the the view that used to be a Java class and that we converted into a Kotlin class. It's still not idiomatic tornado effects, but it's valid Kotlin code. You can see now that the file that used to be named namepage Java is now called namepage.kt. And uh, the IDE is smart enough to compile this file for us and turn it into bytecode. But if we were to run the Maven build, we would uh, see that something is wrong. And uh, what's wrong is that it can't find the name page. The reason for that is that uh, our Maven uh, build is only set up to handle Java files. So it won't even compile this name page uh, .kt file and will end up uh, missing the name page class. So Let's first configure this project to properly use Kotlin. And uh, um, JetBrains already has a great tutorial on how to do that. So I just uh, uh, looked it up, uh, Googled it, fa found this page, and let's uh, quickly follow the instructions. So we need to add a property to tell which version of Kotlin we'll be using. So let's copy this and uh, place it into our properties map. Uh, it says here that we need a dependency on the Kotlin standard lib. We don't actually need that because we already have a dependency on Tornado FX and that will include the standard lib for us. So, and uh, here um, it tells us how to compile Kotlin only source code, so that's not good for us. And here we have uh, uh, compiling Kotlin and Java sources. So basically, we will just copy this block and paste it into our build. Now, this is not quite enough, actually, because Tornado FX is now compiled uh, to Java 8 bytecode. And uh, by default, the Kotlin Maven plugin will compile Java 6 bytecode. So we need to add a little something here. We need to add the configuration block and configure the JVM target to 1.8. If you skip this step, you will get some weird errors about not being able to inline code. So let's just do it and uh, save ourselves the trouble later. So let's try to recompile our project now. Great. So now we're able to write one file at a time in Kotlin and uh, gradually introduce both Kotlin and Tornado Effects into our project. Uh, but as I touched upon, this is not idiomatic uh, Tornado Effects. It works, but we can do a lot better actually. So uh, let's have a look at the, the FXML file that's backing this name page. So I'm going to open it and I'm going to split the screen so we can see both uh, the FXML file and our controller at the same time. Uh, normally in a Tornado FX application, you would use the TypeSafe builders. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is convert this uh, FXML file into a TypeSafe builder. So let's move this root node down here. And instead of uh, just specifying that we want the grid pane to be loaded from FXML, let's create a grid pane by ourselves. Now, if we have a look at the grid pane constructor, if you will, you see that uh, there is an age gap of 10 configured. So let's do the same. And inside we have a label and a text field. So the label is configured like this. We don't actually have to set the column index to zero because that's the default. And then we have a text field and the text field if you remember, is bound to the customer name property. And we can do that in one go here. So we can just say that we want to bind it directly here. And that means we can get rid of this block. 
For this one, however, we need to set the, the column constraints. So let's do that. Column constraints and configure the column index. Sorry, grid pane constraints. Column index is one. Now we don't need this either because this that we used to get um, uh, using the FXID delegate is now this text field right here. So let's remove that as well. We should be able to actually delete the name page FXML file by now and uh, rerun the application and it should look exactly the same. It looks great. Now, of course, using the grid pane is okay, but it's uh, not always the best uh, option, at least not in Tornado FX, if you're building some form-like view. So let's uh, uh, change this to be even more Id idiomatic Tornado FX. So let's turn this into a form and uh, create a field set. And uh, let's move the text field inside the field set and create a field and the field will have the, the label and let's move the text field to here let's clean up remove this label also remove the grid pane constraints and this last set of curlies this is more like uh, how you would write a tornado fx uh, view from scratch so if you rerun now we're gonna see a slight difference in, in the appearance and that is that it has a, a little bit more padding and the text field is stretching a bit further by default so it actually fits our uh, wizard a bit better so that's all I wanted to show you just uh, quickly have a look at how you can start in evolving your plain JavaFX applications into both Kotlin and Tornado FX. thanks for watching